War is tragic no matter which side you are on. Rules of engagement attempt to bring structure and order to the chaos of war. The Shenanye Massacre, tragically, is an example of what happens when rules aren't followed. Anarchy reigns, lives are lost, and the atrocities of war are multiplied. When we think of World War II, we usually think of the war crimes caused by the Nazis. However, the Shenanye Massacre was a war crime committed by an American combat unit on New Year's Day, 1945, during the Battle of the Bulge. Welcome to Bizarre History. Today, we examine the tragic story of the Shenanye Massacre. This was the last major Nazi offensive of the war. It lasted five weeks and set out to stop the Allies from using the port of Antwerp in Belgium. The idea was to also split the Allied front in two so that the Nazis could surround them. This didn't really go as planned, but the beginning of the battle caught the Allied forces off guard, and for a couple of weeks it seemed as though this was a battle the Nazis were going to win. In the early days of the battle, the Malmedy Massacre occurred. This got the ball rolling on what would be a revenge massacre, tragically, in the coming weeks. On December 17, 1944, just one day after the beginning of the Battle of the Bulge, the 1st SS Panzer Division of the 6th Panzer Army was moving west from Bulligan, Belgium. At the exact same time, an American convoy of about 30 vehicles and around 140 men of Battery B of the 28th Field Artillery Observation Battalion were headed in the opposite direction. The two groups would meet just south of Malmedy. The Germans, ready for battle, began firing on Battery B. The U.S. troops panicked as they were not expecting an attack this far away from the lines. Some escaped, but most of the 140 men of Battery B surrendered. For some unknown reason, after being searched, the GIs were lined up in eight rows and fired on by combat group Piper. German troops then walked through the bodies and shot anyone who was still alive. Around 84 U.S. soldiers were killed and just about 40 survived by running into the woods or pretending they were dead. It was the discovery of this war crime that led to a manhunt by U.S. authorities. But before that happened, news of the Malmedy massacre spread around the American troops fighting at the Battle of the Bulge. There was hate and anger over the massacre as well as ideas on how to seek revenge. In the chilling aftermath of the horrors that unfolded at Malmedy, a whispered wind of change rustled through the American ranks. A directive baptized in blood and fury followed. The order was clear, kill all German prisoners. The American troops and battalions were not known for killing POWs, but the change came easily. There was an unofficial, or it might have been official, no one can really say or wanted to say, order to kill all German prisoners of war caught in the fighting after that day. It was New Year's Day, January 1st, 1945, when this order took a tragic turn. Eyewitness accounts put the number of German POWs gunned down to around 60. There was some confusion as to if there was an order to take no prisoners, or if this was just in retaliation for the GI's murder during the Malmedy massacre. No one can say for certain, but what we do know is that what the American troops had been claiming about Japanese and German troops was now true about them too. There had been a war crime committed by American troops, and the question was now who, if anyone, would be held accountable. There is some speculation that it was only German troops that were caught directly after the Malmedy massacre on December 17th that would have been in danger of being murdered. However, this massacre happened two weeks later. Therefore, some say that the two massacres have nothing to do with each other. It did happen, and now the question was, who, if anyone, would be held responsible, or would there be a cover-up? The tragedy did not go unnoticed, but the aftermath of the massacre was silenced and kept as a dark secret. There was little to no investigation done on any American soldiers after the end of World War II. None of the soldiers who took place in the Shenanye Massacre ever went to trial, or really even were interviewed about the 60 or so SS POWs murdered on January 1, 1945. Unfortunately, this is not the only war crime that American soldiers 
soldiers committed during World War II, but none saw the glare of the Nuremberg trials. There was some unearthed information that aired in July 2018 on a radio show about World War II. In this episode of the show, Chris Harlan Dunaway took a deep look at the Chenonier Massacre. What he found was shocking and tragic. The sources he cited discussed more than 80 German soldiers, almost the exact number of Americans killed in Malmedy, were victims of the Chenonier tragedy. There is a diary entry of General George S. Patton, which mentions hoping to hide or cover up the murdered 50-plus German soldiers. Not even General Patton knew the correct number of murdered German POWs. This is not the only evidence that was revealed during this radio show. There were also declassified files. One shocking file was from a soldier, Max Cohen. He made a statement describing what he said was about 70 German prisoners that were killed by machine gun by the 11th Armored Division. It was also said the Supreme Commander of the Allied Expeditionary Force, General Dwight D. Eisenhower, ordered a full investigation. However, the 11th Armored Division refused to cooperate because they said the war was over and the unit was disbanded. No one was ever brought up on charges or convicted. While no one was put on trial for the Chenonier Massacre, there were trials associated with the Malmedy Massacre. On May 16, 1946, the 74 SS members who were part of the massacre unit went on trial. They were charged with many crimes from the Battle of the Bulge. Colonel Joaquin Piper, who was in charge and gave the orders to kill the American POWs, was said to have been part of a Nazi conspiracy to be ruthless against all Allied forces and even civilians. Apparently, the orders to kill prisoners of war came from Hitler himself as a policy change right around the time of the Battle of the Bulge. Colonel Piper argued he was just following orders. One month later, on July 16th, the tribunal found all 74 SS members guilty. Colonel Piper and the 42 of his soldiers were sentenced to death by hanging. The other 23 were given various sentences, ranging from 10, 15, or 20 years in prison. Justice was served for the American POWs who were murdered in the Malmedy Massacre. The same cannot be said for the German POWs murdered during the tragic Chenonier Massacre. The cover-up and lack of attention given to the war crime prevented them from being held accountable for their actions. Not only is this tragic and shocking that 80 German POWs were murdered by American soldiers, but you can imagine how many lesser-known killings of German POWs must have occurred during this time. This tragedy stands out because the number of dead, but there were more that have yet to be discussed or revealed. During the time between the Malmedy Massacre and the Chenonier Massacre, it is almost certain that many other German POWs were murdered. It is astounding and a real catastrophe that is unfathomable in our current world. The Chenonier Massacre is a real tragedy with no clear resolution. If this information was known at the time of the offense, it would have sent shockwaves across the Atlantic Ocean from Belgium to America. The American soldiers who committed this war crime were never brought to justice because they were on the winning side of the war. At the time, this might have also caused a public uproar, as public sentiment was very pro-military. Therefore, it is understandable why they were not investigated. The lack of investigation into the Chenonier massacre is what makes it more tragic. No accountability or justice for the SS POWs who lost their lives and no real record of what occurred. The tragic loss of life in the Malmedy and the Chenonier massacres could have been avoided. If you want more of history's long-held secrets and darkest confessions, hit like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. From us at Bizarre History, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.